Hey YouTube, how's it going? How are you guys doing? Been a while. So um I hope everybody's um staying safe out there, you know, um during these crazy times. I think things are kind of picking back up. You know, things are opening up, stores opening. We can order curbside. But um I just hope everybody's safe, you know, like you know. Hope they're doing well and just um, their families and, you know, your coding and your life and everything else. Well, um, let's get into it. So, this section is the HTML tables. And we, we left off on table headings, so we're going to do table headings right now. All right, so HTML tables. H uh, table headings are, right, let's see if this loads up first. Okay, great. Table headings. Table data doesn't make much sense without titles to describe what the data represents. To add titles to rows and columns, you can use the table heading element, TH. The table head element is used just like a table data element, except with a relevant title just like table data and table heading must be placed with a table row so this is table table row table heading table heading scope equals col saturday table scope equals col sunday tr tr table row table row table heading scope equals row Temperature text. So table data 72, 81, table, row, and table. So what happened in this code above? First, a new row was added to hold the three headings. A blank heading, a Saturday heading, and a Sunday heading. The blank heading creates the table cell necessary to align the table headings correctly over the data they correspond to. In the second row, one table heading was added as a row title, temperature. Note also the use of the scope attribute, which can take one or two values. So this says row minus or dash. This value makes it clear that the heading is, there, is for a row. COL dash, this makes that this value makes it clear that the heading is for a column. HTML code for tables may look a little strange at first, but analyzing it piece by piece helps make the code more understandable. Okay, so in the first row, add three table headings. The, the headings should contain the following data in order. Company name, number of items to ship, next action. These headings will add meaning to the rest of the data in the table okay so in the first row let's see right here add three table headings okay so how would we do this so they did it like table row table headings so let's go ahead and do this we're gonna put table what are we gonna do it with though table heading company name the headings will add meaning to the rest of the data table so let's Oh, we add the headings. Okay. Let's do the table headings first. So right now we're going to add the table headings. Okay. This is the table heading. Let's check it. Did you add three headings? Okay. No. Okay. Let's copy and paste this. See what it does now. Okay. 
Great. We had the table headings. The table headings are right there. Next. Table borders. So far, the tables you ha you created have been a little difficult to read because they have no borders. In older versions of HTML, a border could be added to a table using the border attribute and setting it equal to an integer. The integer would represent the thickness of the border. So table border equals one, table row, table data 73, closing table data. Then you have your table data 81, and then you end with a table row and end with a table. The code in the example above is following is deprecated, so please don't use it. It is meant to illustrate older conventions you may come across when reading other developers' code. The browser will likely still interpret your code correctly. If you use the border attribute, but that doesn't mean the attribute should be used. We use CSS to add style to the HTML documents because it helps us separate the structure of a page from how it looks. You can learn more about CSS in our CSS courses. You can achieve the same table border effect using CSS. So this is table, comma, table data, and it has a border, one pixel solid black. The code example above uses CSS instead of HTML to show the table borders. We are going to need some more, we're going to need some more data in the table. Add the following data to the table. Make sure to place it after the second row. Wow, this is a big one. Table row, table data, Dave's Burgers, table data, two, table data, close, table data, send voice, table row. Okay, this is a table row here, and your data is in the middle, and your text. Again, table row data, uh, and your sections, different sections of it. Okay, so... All right. Okay, let's do this one. Spanning columns. What if the table contains data that spans multiple columns? For example, a personal calendar could have events that span across multiple hours or multiple days. Data can span columns using the call span attribute. The attribute accepts an integer greater than or equal to one to denote the number of columns it spans across. Table, table row, table heading, table heading, table heading, table row, open table row, call span out of town. An example above the data out of town spans a Monday and Tuesday table heading using the value two columns. The data back in the town appears under the Wednesday. Okay. Okay, so in index HTML span a TD element across two columns. Okay. Let's run this. Did you span it two across? No, I did not. Let's see. Index span and two element across two columns. Span TD. Oh, okay. So span a TD. We'll do it here. We'll do that TD. TD column. So we got to span a TD element across two columns. So where are the columns at? Table. Let's see. Table TR. T 
TH, TH Monday. Okay. And Wednesday, TR, Tyrell, column span, out of town. Okay, so back to town. And the search is up here. In the example of out of town spans of Monday two, the table headings. Table, the data back in town appears only under Wednesday heading. In the HJ, I'll span the D, TD, element across it. So, We need to do that then. So let's go and do TD. Column span. Let's do it right. Here. Let's see. There we go. So we did that. So if that column span TD right here, that was the wrong area before. I tried to do it here, but that's completely wrong. So let's bring it back. Let's see what it shows. Okay. Then we do it down here. That moves it. Okay, great. All right, guys. This is... um. What was this, part two? So, we have done the part two. So, we did the borders and the columns. And, yeah, did we do the headings? Let's see. Yeah. We did that. So we have done this section. We need headings, borders, columns. And next section will be doing more of these. The span rows, table body, table head, table footer, and style CSS, and so on. All right, guys. Um, that's pretty good. So we, lear we learned. What did we learn? We learned about the table headings. Uh, table headings is elements used just to use like a table data except with a relevant title. Just like table data, a table heading must be placed with a table row. You learn about that. And then borders. We learned that um, this was the, um, in older versions of HTML, they're using table border one in the HTML. But in CSS, you can do the same thing in Cascade Style Sheets. And lastly, we did spanning columns. We, um, Data can span columns using call span attribute. The attribute sets the integer greater than or equal to one to denote the number of columns it spans across. Example, the, the data out of town spans a Monday and Tuesday table heading using the value two columns. The data back in the town appears only under Wednesday heading, see? So that's what we learned. So we take this away, guys. We look at it right now. Watch. Oops. We look at it now. This, this what it shows. See, it's small like that. Then we put it back, and it's a little bit bigger. It expands. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, and stay safe. And thank you so very much for everything. 
and also just keep coding 